Now look at this garbled mess. What a disaster, okay? I'm headed from this into one of these. Okay, that's where I'm going. So you can see that for any of these, the only way to get to one of these is to do some completion of the square. Right? I need to do some factorization. Now, immediately I can rule out, see how I've got um, form 1, 2, 3, 4? I can rule out 1 and 3. Can you see why? Without doing any work, I can rule out 1 and 3. Because you've got a y bit. Yeah, I have, a, I have an x bit hanging out here. And I've got a y bit hanging out here, right? Now, you can see this has no single x term or y term. Nor does this, right? Nothing else is being squared, so that's why you don't get that bit. That's why I know I have some horizontal or vertical shift implied, so I need to find out what it is. Okay, so to make things easy, let me show you the way that I go about factorizing this. In my first line, <laughs> Don't panic. I'm going to do three things. I'll tell you the three things and then we'll do them. The first thing is I want to group my x's together and my y's together. I'm going to do that. The second thing is once I group them, I'm going to factorize them as well because I want to get to this, right? And thirdly, I'm going to kick this constant, which really belongs on the right-hand side. I'm going to kick it over the other side, okay? It sounds like a lot, but I promise you it's not that hard. Have a look. Firstly, let's start grouping. So I see I have 4x squared and 24x. You happy with that? So therefore, I'm going to take out a common factor. 4x squared, 24x, what do I take out? What number do I take out? The answer is 4. Yeah, good. You're pretty much always going to take out the coefficient of x squared because you're going to land here. Right? You don't want any numbers hanging out in there, right? They, all the um, coefficients come out when you factorize. So I'll take my 4 out, which leaves me with that. Looking good? And then I do the same for the y's, okay? So what can I take out of the y's? I've got 9y squared and minus 36y. Gonna take out 9. How's that look? Have I grouped all my x's and y's? Yep, yeah, they look good. And of course that constant, which is 36, he doesn't belong over there on the left with the other guys. Sorry, constant. He belongs on the right-hand side. He's gonna turn into 1 eventually. Alright, having done this, I'm now set up to complete the square. In fact, I'm going to complete two squares, right? So here, what do I have to add inside these brackets to complete the square? The answer is 9, but don't forget, I'm not really adding 9, am I? I am in fact adding 36, very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that plus 36 right away, before I forget that I've done that. Okay? I've added 36 in there. Now I want to complete this square, what do I need to add here? The answer is I add plus 4, but of course we know it's not really 4. By coincidence, it is also 36. So I add 2 lots of 36 over there. Okay, you see what I've done? Alright, having completed this square, I'm ready to factorize because these are now squares, right? So I have got x plus 3 all squared and y minus... y minus? y minus 2. y minus 2 all squared. Once I resolve all the constants and I collect my terms, on the right hand side I have the negative 36 and the 36 cancel, so you just end up with 36. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost at one of these forms. I only need to do one more thing. I've got to divide by whatever will give me 1 on the right hand side, which is 36. Okay? So once I do that, I am at my form. Correct. Okay. So, that's all the mucking around we need to do to the equation. Now we need to draw some conclusions off. <coughs> okay. So, first thing, the easiest thing to read off is just the center. It's sitting right there. That was the whole point of all that factorizing work. What is the center of this ellipse? Minus three. Negative three, 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 comma, two. Right, that wasn't so hard. Okay. Now, this next bit I don't need right away, but I might as well state it. I have my a squared and my b squared sitting right there. Okay, so I might as well use this to work out a and b. Um, they will be handy later when I'm doing like these steps over here and trying to work out where the focus is. Okay, so there's the center. A and b. I just read off from the bigger and the smaller number. You take the square root, and that gives you what's a? Three and b is two. Done. Okay, good, good, good. Now, have a look at what we were asked to find. Center, foci, and directrices. I found the center. To get the foci and directrices, I've got A and B. What's that last piece that I need? I need the eccentricity, right? A, B, and E, they're everything. So, once you've got something to wipe the board with. Yeah. 
I can determine the eccentricity just by algebra, right? So in fact, I like to write the fact that I am doing that. I say determine eccentricity because as you've already noticed, there is a lot of, there are a lot of equations flying around, okay? And now I'm going to go straight to that relationship we determined, v squared equals that. Okay. Now b squared and a squared, uh, I already know what they are. They are 4 and 9, right? Okay, you can see, and this step, this series of steps is always going to be the same. I'm going to divide through 4 on 9, and then I switch, they do that switch a route. So I'm going to subtract e, so I'm going to add e squared to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 4 on 9 from both sides, okay? So that lands us with e squared on the left, and what Five do I have nine. on the right? 5 on 9, right? One last step before I get e, which is just to take the square root. And at this point, uh, it's not like 100% um, necessary, but we should say it. I have excluded an answer, right? Because there are two solutions to this equation. I've only taken this one. Why have I done that? It's a ratio, right? So therefore, I can say E is greater than zero. Kind of by definition of what the eccentricity is. Ta-da! There we go. So, that was almost all the hard work. Now I just kind of need to fit them in. I need to do a bit, bit of substitution, right? So let's do the foci first. Now, if you have another colour here, this will be useful. To work out which of these we're going to use, because I have four, right? I've already eliminated two because I know the centre is not of the origin, but which one of these do I use? How do I tell which one of these is in operation? What was the difference between these two? <coughs> yeah, which way have I stretched? Which way is the major axis? And I can tell that, and this is the way that I do it, like you can write it a different way if you like, but I find this quite reliable. I look at these numbers, right? And I say, look, this is bigger. So I say major axis, right? I, in fact, I write major there, and I write it next to the x, so that tells me I'm stretching this way, okay? And then I've got the minor axis over here, okay? So this is my mental tag to distinguish. Now I know when I'm working out the, and I like to do it in this order, because now I'm like, okay, now I'm traveling along this major axis, right? I've got this guy here moving along the x-axis, right? Wrong color. So I can say the foci are at, where's the center? H, that's minus 3. <coughs> Plus or minus <coughs> AE. There's A and there's E. So what's AE? <laughs> it's just the square root of 5. <coughs> Comma. And I've also had vertical shift, uh, it's two units, so there you go, there's the shortcut. Okay. Doing the directrices in a similar way. I know they've also gone this way, they've also gone that way. So, <coughs> excuse me, they're also going to start with that h number, so x is going to be negative 3 plus or minus. Okay, now I, do, I like to write this step out because I, I get confused. I'm going to get fractions on fractions in a second. A on E. There's A on E. There's E. This is root 5 on 3. Um, you saw how I did the foci. I just did them all in one hit. Okay? Because you are doing AE, where is it? Because you're doing AE, you almost always, and we talked about this before, you almost always get some cancellation happening. This gets to be nice and neat. This number and, and, and this number tend to match up, right? But here it's the opposite. I find when I do, just from practice, I find when I do this in my head, the way I did the foci, I almost all invariant, like 50% I get a roll because I, I do this fraction of fraction thing incorrectly. So being that you can see it there, what happens to that three on the denominator of the denominator? Yeah, it multiplies the numerator, right? So in fact, this is nine on five. Now I could, um, I could rationalize this and write it as nine root five on five, but mostly you'll find it's not that big a deal. Um, because I'm not going to be adding this fraction to anything else, and um, there's no like there's no common terms here, there's no advantage to um, simplifying it, rationalizing it in that way. Okay. Alright, so let me just rewind. We did a lot of things. Okay, so let me just put some tags on them. Okay. First we started and we went through all of this. It looks like a lot of algebraic work. What what heading would you put over all of this? What were we trying to do? We're trying to complete the square and really Factorize. That's where I'm landing. Okay. So this whole step is the factorization step. 
Step one, factorization. Okay. Step two, we've looked at these features. Step two. These features are the ones you just read straight off the equation, right? It's like, I don't need any manipulation anymore. In fact, the factorization was the manipulation I needed. The center, A and B, they're just sitting there on the equation, just read them off, okay? So I factorize firstly. Secondly, I read off the easy features. Um, thirdly, what did I do thirdly? Where did I go from this? Yeah, I went to eccentricity, right? Number three is eccentricity. The way you can remember that is if you did step two, now you've got A and B. And you're like, what do I do with A and B? Answer, use them to get A. Okay. Last step, number four. Remember how I called these the easy features, right? These are kind of the harder features. They take a little more, um, a little more hand, like sort of manipulation to get to them. Not a lot more, but like, a little bit more. And it's important when you do step four, that you identify what the major axis is. Because that'll tell you, do my foci go this way or do they go that way? And that's a really common error to make. Students kind of get this in their head. It's the more common one. And so they don't even think to uh, worry about, well, which one's major and which one's minor. They just go straight into a four, and that's where they surrender. Okay?